In this video, you will learn to use method 1 and method 2 to identify the first step in a more complex reaction. We will start with the example pictured on screen. I'll redraw the reactants and split the metal and nonmetal bond in the lithium acetylide, drawing most of the Lewis structures. We want to decide if the addition to the carbonyl would be the first step in the reaction, or whether the first step would be a deprotonation. You might not have learned this carbonyl reaction yet, and if not, don't worry about learning it right now. The point is that you will learn many reactions in your organic chemistry courses, and will have to figure out which reaction comes first between all of them. We focus on acid-base reactions here because they are so common. In general, the acid-base reaction will occur first if the equilibrium favors the products. If the acid-base equilibrium favors the starting materials, then this step is not likely to be the first one in the reaction. The major exception is in situations where no other reaction would occur until an acid-base reaction had taken place. I'll draw the products of the reaction mechanism and label the acid, base, conjugate acid, and conjugate base. First, let's use method 1, the pKa method, to determine the direction of the equilibrium. Which way does the equilibrium lie? To figure out the answer, we find the pKa values of the two acids, the acid and the conjugate acid. The phenol has a pKa value of approximately 10, whereas the pKa value of the alkyne is approximately 25. The phenol is the stronger acid of the two, and the alkyne is the weaker acid of the two. The equilibrium lies to the side with the weaker species, in this case the product side. That means the first step in this reaction is likely to be an acid-base one. We can also use method 2, compare the relative stabilities of the charge species, to determine whether the first step in the reaction is an acid-base one. Which species is the strongest base? When we compare the two bases, we see that the negative charge on the conjugate base is resonance stabilized, while the negative charge in the base is not. The negative charge in the conjugate base resides on an oxygen atom, while the negative charge on the base resides on a carbon atom. The more electronegative oxygen can better stabilize the negative charge than the less electronegative carbon atom. These factors, resonance and electronegativity, help to stabilize the conjugate base more than the base meaning that the phenoxide is a weaker base than the acetylide. Therefore, the acid-base reaction favors the products. This is the same conclusion that we came to by using method 1, and it should be. If we'd come to a different conclusion using the two methods, we've done something incorrect in our analysis. Both these analyses bring us to the conclusion that the acid-base step occurs first in the mechanism. Next, we will again use method 1 and method 2 to identify or draw a base that would drive the equilibrium to the product side. To accomplish this, the products must be more stable than the starting materials. Using method 1's analysis, the pKa value of the acid must be lower than the pKa value of the conjugate acid. For example, if we used hydroxide as the base, it would deprotonate the alkyne and give the acetylide, the conjugate base, and water, the conjugate acid. Will this equilibrium favor the products? No. An alkyne has a pKa value of approximately 25, and water has a pKa value of 15.7. Because water is a stronger acid than the alkyne, this equilibrium will favor the starting materials. This example brings up a common error. We often learn that hydroxide is a strong base, and it is, but it is not strong enough in all situations, like this one. Keep in mind that acid-base chemistry is relative. It is the relative strength of the reacting partners that will determine the outcome of the reaction. Let's try another example, this time using butyl lithium as the base. Again, we can dissociate the polar covalent metal-nonmetal bond to help visualize the electrons. Which way does the equilibrium lie in this case? The equilibrium lies to the product side. The base is an sp3 hybridized carbanion, while the conjugate base is an sp hybridized carbanion. The conjugate base is more stable than the base, meaning the equilibrium lies to the product side. 
In summary, you can use either method 1 or method 2 to draw or identify a base that would drive an acid-base equilibrium to the products. The key is to find an acid-base reaction that leads to the weaker species on the product side. When analyzing acid-base chemistry in any more complex reaction, the key principles always hold true. Acid-base reactions are fast. Acid-base equilibria favor the weaker species. The direction of the equilibrium can be determined using either method 1 or method 2.